The first draft of history is always of necessity incomplete, but we know enough already about what happened last week to make our own attempt at an early account. Our cover story is reported by Lee Cowan. She wants we were normal, good, law-abiding citizens, and you guys did this to us! We can now add January 6th, 2021, to that very short list of dates in American history that will live forever in infamy. Shots fired! Shots fired! Just how will history record this day? This is our country, this is our house. Was it a riot? Domestic terrorism? An insurrection. Well, we came this far. What do you say? Our best hope is that it's at least a turning point. The symbol of our democracy shuddered under the pounding. Those watching at home shuddered too. Confederate flags, nooses, body armor, zip ties for handcuffs. What we're seeing are a small number of extremists. The images prompted President elect Joe Biden to use a word we rarely hear from our leaders, certainly not about ourselves. It borders on sedition. Since election day, it's as if there had been a pot of political stew left on the stove to burn, simmering with conspiracy theories about the election. In Philadelphia, they keep the votes of dead people secret. Delusions not just glowing in the underbelly of the internet, but from the White House. We can't have an election stolen like by it like this. And many members of Congress, too. We know that this, this has really been a stolen election. I've seen the evidence. They don't get to steal it from us. They don't get to tell us we didn't see what we saw. A lot of these folks have been hearing for months now that the election has been stolen from them. They heard that it was going to be stolen from them before election night. Renee DeResta is a researcher at the Stanford Internet Observatory that, in part, studies the use of misinformation online. Donald Trump won this election. They had been fed a consistent, misleading, false narrative alongside calls from the more extreme elements that said, we have to do something about this. The idea that that was just going to somehow stay as some online message board commentary is just wildly naive. Because it had real world consequences. There is no distinction anymore between online and offline. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake... With just hours before Joe Biden's victory was set to be certified... We will never give up. We will never concede. It ...came a battle happen. cry. You don't concede when there's theft involved. Up on Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell had lost two. Georgia's runoff election this past week would soon leave him in the minority. And yet... This election were overturned... He was prepared to accept... By mere allegations from the losing side... What the president couldn't. Our democracy would enter a death spiral. I object to the election... Still, eight Republican senators and 139 Republican House members were still intent on stalling the inevitable, announcing they would object to the certification of Joe Biden as the winner. What does it say to the nearly half the country that believes this election was rigged if we vote not even to consider the claims of illegality and fraud in this election? Outside, the tidal wave of denial began pouring down Pennsylvania Avenue. It crashed onto the steps of the Capitol and seeped all the way to the doors of the House chamber itself. Guns were drawn, representatives fled, people died including U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, a 12-year veteran of the force. Scores of arrests have been made in the wake of the mayhem, and the FBI promises there will be more. It is into the teeth of that America the next administration is about to walk. Nobody looks at this country and says, I wish my government worked like that. Ian Bremmer is a geopolitical strategist of sorts. He founded the Eurasia Group, which advises clients on political risk. In 1989, when the wall came down, we won the Cold War because people around the world looked to the United States as an example of good governance. You can't say that today. This past week, he says, was just the latest tarnish on our reputation. Anyone that thinks that we are suddenly going to be 
welcomed back as America's, America's the global policeman, we're the architect of global trade, we're the cheerleader of global values. We have squandered that legacy. The Senate will come to order. Congress did resume its constitutional duties that night. To those who wreaked havoc in our capital today, you did not win. Presided over by the outgoing Violence vice president. There were calls for restraint heading into the all-night session. The best way we can show respect for the voters who were upset is by telling them the truth. We brought this hell upon ourselves. With their halls and offices around them laying in ruin, some of those who had objected to certifying the election changed their minds. Others didn't. Irregardless. Didn't matter. The votes for president by 3.46 a.m., the county. Joseph R. Biden Jr. was over. Of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. In the days that followed, whispers of declaring Mr. Trump unfit for office turned into actual discussions about invoking the 25th Amendment. House Democrats drafted an article of impeachment against the president that could be acted on as early as tomorrow. He must be removed from office. By Friday, Twitter had banned the president. His more than 88 million followers will have to find him somewhere else. Facebook and Instagram blocked him too. Those watching the collapse from inside the White House urged the president to publicly grasp a reality that some are still not sure he necessarily believes. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. That did not, apparently, include attending his rival's inaugural. He announced he would pass on that. The vice president is welcome to come. We'd be honored to have him there. While Mr. Trump seemed to accept that he'd lost the battle, he still insisted the war is far from over. To all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Abraham Lincoln once talked of the choice between rule and ruin. That was tested this past week. But unity isn't some kind of unicorn. You might remember a moment after 9-11, when the Capitol was spared an attack. Democrats stood next to Republicans and spontaneously broke into a chorus of God bless America. Whatever acrimony existed, whatever perceived sins had been committed, melted under a common purpose to defend democracy. That was two decades ago, hardly ancient history, at least we hope.